Hi, it's Stacy at Tamarack Nature Center, part of Ramsey County Parks and Rec. Well, it's great to be back. It was so nice to have a day off. But I heard you had kind of some interesting subs that were taking over for us. Well, anyway, I hope you had some fun, learned something new. So it's all about water this week. So Shannon and I pulled together some activities that you can do with water. I know you've probably been busy swimming, splashing, going through sprinklers, but here are a few things you can do where you live, whether it's inside or outside with some simple objects, like take these jelly jars or empty um, pickle jars, some containers that are glass that are empty, and spread them out. It's great if they can all be the same size, but they don't have to be. And then you notice, are they all filled with the same amount of water? No. I've varied the amount of water in every jar and then lined them up in order. Now we need some drumsticks or xylophone sticks because it's going to be like a water xylophone. So I've got some sticks here. These happen to have no bark on them and they seem like they resonate a little bit better. But you can just try all the sounds that you can make on the sides. on the top and then if you want to challenge yourself a little bit try to play name that tune with someone else you know let's see if i can bring back a little song from Sound of Music. Maybe you can guess it, maybe you can't, but I'm trying. Anyway, something simple and fun you can do with some homemade simple objects maybe lying around where you live. Up next, some fun activities that you're gonna get wet. Hello, Shannon here. It is good to be back here at Tamarack Nature Center with you all. And today, we are making sponge bombs. Now, I bet a lot of you like to have water balloon fights. Well, I'm sad to tell you that balloons are not very good for the environment. Um, and they leave all those little pieces of plasticky stuff laying around and it's hard to pick it all up out of the grass and then the animals eat it and that's not good for them. So I have here an alternative to water balloons. Plus you can use these for a lot of other things too. But first, let me show you how to make one. I just went to the grocery store, bought just regular old sponges. You don't want the kind with the scrubby stuff on them. You want just plain sponges on both sides. You're going to cut them into strips like this. Three strips from each sponge. So you're going to need a pretty big, good scissors. I like to just eyeball it kind of, mm, that's approximately thirds. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to cut those. I'm going to need nine total strips here for my sponge bomb. So uh, you can make them all one color. You can make them two colors. You can make them however you want. Try not to bug your parents too much to get specific colors at the store because sometimes it's hard to find specific colors, right? So we're just going to, we're just going to go with the colors that we have. So now I have my nine strips. I'm gonna stack them up. Okay, we're gonna do uh, some color mixing here. Get my nine strips. Okay, nine strips. The next thing I need is a rubber band. I use um, these thicker ones. They're a little more sturdy than the skinny ones. You can also use an ouchless hair binder, hair band. Um, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. You're gonna take your nine and just wrap the rubber band around a couple of times so that it's nice and tight. You want it to be tight. And you want it to be in the middle. So, looks like I got it three times around. And then you just need to kind of pull it apart so it looks kind of like a koosh ball, if anybody knows what a koosh ball is. I haven't seen those for a while, but they're so much fun to play with. So here we go. There is 
my sponge bomb. Now the next thing you need is some water. I just have some water in a pitcher here. I'm gonna get it wet. I'm thinking if you have a bunch of five gallon buckets full of water sitting around your yard, you and your friends can have an epic sponge bomb fight because check out what happens when you splat it. Whoa, sploosh, look at all the water that came out of that. Whoa, you can also, so you can throw these at each other because they're not very heavy, right? Um, also, if you have like a wiffle ball bat or I don't know, some other bat that you don't care if it gets wet, you can, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of water. All right, so on a hot day, these things are gonna be so much fun. Make up whatever games you want. Everyone is going to get soaking wet and it's going to be wonderful. Welcome to Tamarack Nature Center's first edition of Sink or Float, the game where you get to play along at home. I have a bin of random found objects here and I'm bored and I like to play in water so you get to benefit. I'm going to pull something out of my bin and you need to guess, will it sink? or will it float? First of all, let's define sink or float. Sink means goes to the bottom of my bin of water here. Float means it stays on top, right? Random objects. I have here a wood cookie. Will it sink or will it float? Now's your chance to guess. Let's see what happens. It floats! Who knew? Okay, what else do we have? Mm. Matchbox car. Will it sink or will it float? It sinks. What else do we have laying around here? Um, ooh, ladybug popper. Sink or float? Um, it kind of half floats. That's pretty cool. What if I flip it over? <laughs> Not bad. Ooh, what if I put the car on top of the wood cookie? sink or float. Oh, well, the car sank. The wood cookie's still floating. What else do we have? Spoon. Everyone has a spoon at their house. Sink or float. Sink. One more. Rubber snake. Sink or float. Clearly not a water snake. But I bet if I put him on top of the wood cookie, I can get him to float. Check that out. You can play this game at home. It's super simple. All you need is some water. It can be in your bathtub. It can be in your kitchen sink. You can put it in a bucket. Whatever you have that holds water, fill it up with water, and then go around your house and find random things that you don't care if they get wet. Uh, make sure they don't belong to your mom and dad, or make sure they don't care if they get wet. And just start putting them in the water and see what happens. It's almost as much fun as a swimming pool. See you next time. Welcome to Tamarack Nature Center's Sink or Float second edition. Hashtag fun with sponges because sponges are so much fun. If you made the sponge bombs I showed you earlier, you probably have some leftover sponges and you can use them to make a boat. These boats are super duper fun and super duper easy. You need a sponge, a kebab skewer, you can get them at the grocery store, and a, probably a pair of scissors. So I used a fun foam, piece of fun foam to make this sail right here, this beautiful sail. Uh, you do not have to make it this shape. You can experiment, make all sorts of different shapes of sails. If you don't have fun foam and you don't want to go to the store, may I suggest using tin foil? Tin foil makes an excellent sail. Uh, you don't, you just want a single layer of tin foil though. Uh, I thought it would be fun to have a double layer and I tried that earlier and it didn't work. So don't do that. Single layer, poke your skewer through the tin foil. If you have trouble getting the tin foil, the skewer through, you can use the scissors and cut it. I didn't really have a trouble with the single layer. Poke your skewer through your sponge. Beauty of the tin foil is I can shape my sail. Uh, if you want, you can cut your skewer off to make it a little shorter. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Just going to 
Check it out. What do you think is going to happen? Everybody knows sponges soak up water. Is it going to sink or is it going to float? How about this one? Sink or float. Look at that. It's the start of an armada. All right. So you can, you can float these wherever, in your bathtub, kitchen sink, in your wading pool, in your big pool, in a puddle out on the street. No, not on the street, on the sidewalk. Okay. You can also experiment. I know that you have laying around your house thousands of little plastic figurines. Your mom keeps trying to get rid of them, but you insist that you need them and that you can't live without them. I know this because I have three kids and tons of plastic figurines. We're going to have a contest. We're going to see which boat holds the most animals. They're floating. I've got a little breeze here today. One frog. One frog. A brontosaurus. Oh, oh, oh. oh, the brontosaurus was a little too much. Here's another frog. Ooh, that bolt can hold two frogs. Do you think it can hold two frogs and, ooh, what is this? An ankylosaurus, I think. Oh, quality. Oh, no, no, oh, oh, it's up against the edge, and so it's not sinking, but check this out. What if I move him towards the middle? <gasps> yes. Two frogs and an ankylosaurus. All right. The wind is blowing it everywhere. Can I add a dragonfly? This boat is holding a lot. Oh no, tinfoil destroyed. Anyway, you get the idea. Sponge boats, so much fun. Find a sail, make it any way you want. Find a place to float them, have contests with your friends. You can blow them across your pool and have races. So much fun. You, the sky's the limit with your imagination.